Sometimes life goes so fast, you just need to step back and take a time out. If you're really lucky, you can spend that time picking the brain of Blue Jackets head coach John Tortorella. We could only find one guy brave enough to do it. Here's Bob McGilligan and Time Out with Torts. Torts, how big was the win for your team on Saturday, going into Carolina and knocking off a team that was undefeated, but even more than that, to bounce back from a, a tough loss that was somewhat self-inflicted just the night before? Yeah, and, and Carolina, uh, rightfully so, being 5-0. and They're a good hockey club. I think one of the top defenses in the league, uh, playing with a ton of confidence. I, I think Rod Brindamore has done a terrific job there with that club. I, I thought we, I thought we played better in Carolina than we did against Buffalo, because uh, you go into an away building. Uh, they win the night before. Uh, I really liked when we scored the third goal. I liked the third period from then on, because I thought we stayed on our toes. Uh, didn't try to go in the back door and just protect the lead. I held them to two chances through the third period, and I thought everybody contributed. I shortened the bench late, uh, but everybody contributed, and, and I think playing the right way. Watching these first five games of the year, has Alexander Winberg finally got the message, or do you hope that he has finally got the message? I know he's got three points. He doesn't have a goal, but just it seems like when he has the puck, he's a different guy out there. He's dictating so far this year. Yeah, and and that's the key is that, He's keeping the puck. He's not getting rid of the puck. He's, uh, he kn- We've had many conversations. He knows he's a really good player. Uh, he, he's got a mindset right now of, uh, of trying to keep the puck, trying to get the middle of the ice, trying to draw people to him so he can make a play because that's, that's his biggest strength is making plays. But if you don't have it, you can't make plays. So I, I think he is. Uh, you could see it right from the first day of camp. He was shooting the puck more. The things we asked him to concentrate on uh, last year and having conflict going over with him, sitting him out, uh, uh, I just think he came in here and hasn't really said too much. He has just gone about his business and has been a very good player for us. You have been very frank in the past, and especially with a guy like Ryan Murray, where you you would like to get them so peeved at you that they just go out and get the job done. Yeah. And uh, Wenberg, it just seems like, He's that's kind of not in his DNA. Is it in there now? Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure. He's such a good kid. Like I, I mean, I have. I've tried to get him so mad at me that I wanted him mad at me. I wanted to see that emotion. But he, 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 he. I don't think I've tried different ways. And Bobby, I'll tell you right now, I've made some mistakes with him too in trying to get him to play. Uh, I think I've come to a better understanding of who he is. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna keep on working together here, and uh, uh, the the key the key the key for him and I is when he does struggle, and he's gonna have some struggles. How do we handle that together? And uh, that that's where I think I've got to be a better coach, and uh, I think we need to work together through that. I saw Oliver Bjorkstrand just before camp started, just ran into him in the parking garage one day, and I asked him how his summer was and asked him if he worked out in the same place that he had the last couple of years, and he said no. He said he, he changed it this year. He went to a different place, worked with some different people, and I was teasing him, and I said, well, that should have 30 goals written all over it then, right? And, I, and to be honest with you, I said, that's how you get torts off your back with that, just go out and get the 30 goals. And he has looked I, – I, I haven't talked to him since then, so I don't know how much – the workouts have had an effect, but he looks like a stronger player this year. Would you agree? Yeah. Saturday night's game, I think him and Luke were two of our strongest players on the puck. Uh, Borky not only – it's easy to, to look at his goal. He fends off a guy. He skates into traffic and just keeps on pushing himself into the middle of the ice and scores. I look at the other things. I look at him protecting the pucks in the breakout when he can't get it out. I look at him taking hits and still holding on to pucks. Uh, I, I, I really like that line with Nick on it. Uh, tried, you know, a couple of different people there. And uh, Nick, I think Nick uh, helps him also. Uh, yeah, so just him, he just carries himself differently right now. Scoring a couple of goals early, I think, is very important for him. Uh, so hopefully it will be continue because he's a big, big base to the puzzle here. And you and I would talk the last two years about – Artemi Panarin, small guy, battled on the puck, fought, won the battles on the boards, and I've always asked Oliver about that. Is that is that like a first a front row example, right? You got a front row seat to watch that, and he doesn't look identical, but I think he looks more similar to that so far. Yeah, I, I, he he did. He could he watched Brad all year long last year, last couple of years. 
and uh, it, it's it's a great it's a great thing to to look at daily as far as what a 170 pound guy can do. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, I, I he has so much potential to to be something special in this league if he can control and, and just have that that toughness mentally to to keep on working on the hardness on the puck. You, you never know where that could be as far as goals for. Talk with head coach John Tortorella. Emil Bemstrom is a guy. He comes over here, a young man, great potential. And it looked like you're trying to use him on the fourth line and then maybe on the power play, similar to that Sam Gagne type role that uh, when Sam was here a couple of years ago. Now, the difference is Sam was a bona fide NHL veteran who was able to make that adjustment and get the most out of it. What are you finding out about Bemstrom? Is he struggling to, I mean, he played a lot of minutes when he was in Europe. Is he struggling in making the adjustment to, Lesser minutes and trying to get more production. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure he is. I, I, I and I'm not. I'm not saying against the, the the people he's playing with, but he's not playing with some of our top offensive guys. Uh, I have other people there, and and the other people there deserve to be there. Uh, so this is an adjustment for him. Uh, uh, he's been put in a lot of offense positions over there. We're trying to get him the puck in the power play. It hasn't happened at a regular pace here this year. It's still very early there. Uh, the thing I like what he's doing, he's really working on the other part of his game uh, as far as his positioning away from the puck. You can see that he can think the game. Um, he's made a couple of really good offensive plays. Uh, with the injury to Andy, I have bumped him up a line. Uh, still hasn't got there. Like he, he has a two-on-one the last game against Carolina. It's like he just wanted to get rid of the puck. That's a guy that just hasn't been in a lot of offensive situations in the National Hockey League. It's inexperience. So he's going to have to live through this. And uh, uh, I'm not going to force feed and take guys out that I think are better players right now than him offensively just to try to get him going. He's going to have to figure out his own way to handle those nine minutes I think he's averaging, which doesn't help him, I get, but the the old chicken and the egg there. This is where he is right now. He's got to try to figure out uh, how to handle himself that way. The thing I'd like to see him improve on is I'd like to see him fight for more pucks and have the puck more that way by him doing a little bit of the work. Uh, I believe it'll come. It's still a 20-year-old Swede coming over here and uh, uh, top league in, in America, top league in, in hockey. You, you're not going to get everything at once. We like to see it all at once. It just doesn't happen that way, so we're going to keep working with it. Funny thing about that two-on-one is the guy that was with him was Alexander Texier. Like, I think Tex was surprised. He got it so quickly, and Tex... Tex beat it up for a little bit, and then he try, and then he shoots it wide. It was just, it was two young guys that, holy shit, it's a two on one, and uh, I think they got a little excited. <laughs> right, because usually if it's an older guy, I see the young guy wanting to get rid of it right away. Well, I've got to feed the veteran; he's been here. But those two guys, anybody take the shot, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They both can shoot the puck. I, I do. It was kind of a little bit of a hot potato going down there, and uh, but that's part of it. That that's that's youth and. Uh, uh, I did. I kind of, I kind of laughed in my head uh, when it happened. But you know, if Bemmer is feeling confident, he carries that puck, and he he may make a play to Tex, but not right away. He just kind of says, "Oh shit, it's a two on one. I got to give it to him." Uh, so yeah, so it, it'll 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 work itself out. And it is funny because once you've been here for a long time, like I, I expect to see certain things, and when that puck comes flying off, I, I'm thinking the same thing. Am I back in the East Coast Hockey League again? Yeah, yeah it's just it, we we and I say it and. And I've, I think I've learned a little bit as a coach. You want everything right away from these young kids, especially guys coming over here from a different country. And uh, you want everything right away. It just doesn't happen. Busy week this week. You're going to play three games in four days, uh, two of them at home. Then you've got to run out to Chicago and play a game there. Um, what kind of challenge is that uh, for you early in the year? I know everybody's rested, but just uh, as far as the lineup, you just approaching that day by day? Day by day, yeah. You know, like I just met with Harry and Kooks. They, they haven't played much. Uh, I've kind of settled in on this six right now. Uh, I took Harry and Kooks out. I forget what game it was, but – it's not like they played poorly. I wanted to see the other guys, and I think uh, Gavrikov has improved tremendously as far as his reads and his physical play. Uh, and Nudie has stepped up and played really well. His legs are moving more. He's more involved in the offense, scores a goal, which helps him. Uh, yeah, so I just had to meet with two guys that 
I told him, I said, I'm not going to pick apart your game and say you did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, and that's why I took you out because I can't do that. It's not on the tape. I said, but this is my decision, and uh, these are the six I'm going with right now. You're going to have to hang in there. They're not happy, uh, but uh, that, that, that's all part of it as we, as we go through this. But it also seems like a no-brainer because Gavrikov and Savard in the last couple of games have formed a pretty good shutdown yeah. pair. And Murray and Nudavara, and we saw them play together before. It's funny because, right, going into it, everybody's like, was Murray going to be with Jones and then Murray going to be with Savard? But those two guys seem to read off each other, and I'm talking about Nudavara and Murray. They were a really good pair when we played them last year. And uh, you know me, I, I, I – I like Z and Jonesy together. I, I think it it creates just our tempo of our team. Um, I like them together. Uh, I, I'm 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 happy with all four pairs, quite honestly. But I only can dress six players, and that's where Harry and Kooks they get kind of screwed here. And uh, I try to be as honest with them as possible because I I really didn't have anything bad to say. I said, but I just told myself this is my decision. And you don't have to be happy about it. I don't expect you happy about it, but you're going to have to hang in there. With John Tortorella, and as I look ahead at the schedule, and I'm not going to ask you about the, the game playing of it, but the Islanders come in on Saturday, and that means Barry Trotz comes in. And I had a question for you. I know you and Barry are close friends, and you have been for quite some time. I know you're close with Mike Sullivan, who was an assistant coach for you for a long time. I know you and John Hines developed a relationship when you coached on Team USA. How many of those guys – do you talk to during the regular season? And are there any other guys? And when you talk, do you talk strategy? Do you compare notes? Or is that all off-season stuff? No, it's all off-season. What I'll do is I'll – when you turn in the, 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 the beginning, the lineup sheets at the beginning of the game, I may write a note on – I can't tell you what I write on there, but I may write a little note to them that only they get because, you know, the referee gets a sheet, the – uh, t- the scorekeepers get a sheet, the visiting coach. I'll write on the visiting coaches or, or wherever we're playing. We may be in their building or whatever. I'll write a couple of notes there. Uh, but, no, there's not, not too much talk. I may see him after the game, but we certainly are talking about, uh, uh, you know, this this guy or how we're going to play. Or If there's anybody I do do talk a little bit during the season, it's Sully because I, I have uh, I've stayed in touch with him a couple of things, with family things and stuff like that. Uh, we may talk a little bit, but we both don't give much, and uh, um, and rightfully so. We're, everybody's competitive, and it, 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 I almost the guys I'm closer to, and I know a lot of the coaches, so I'm I'm so goddamn old in this game. But there's some coaches that you're so close to them, but you want to beat them. It makes you want to beat them even more. So you, you keep everything close to the vest. Are, are there any guys that you're closer to than the guys that I mentioned, or, or on the same level of those guys? Oh, I don't know. You know. The, he, one thing about the coaches, I, I think we, when you're not playing against one another and a coach is in a jam or uh, you're playing against a coach and the score's out of control, you don't try to embarrass the other team. Uh, it's happened to me a couple of times from a couple of young coaches in this league. I won't forget. There's a couple of guys in this league when I get the opportunity that are young coaches. If I have a chance to run up a score, I'm going to run it up on them because I just don't think they, they, they have the respect uh, or showed respect to the coaches. I think in it, when you're not playing against one another, I think you need to try to help one another because that's all we have is ourselves. Only thing we have people talking to us is when we get fired. The GM tells you you're fired. Uh, so yeah, I, I yeah I, I I got a hate on for a couple of guys that uh, just are a little bit disrespectful and and quite honestly too arrogant. Wait your turn for arrogance and. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. I'm not. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you because the players are so young now, and you always talk about the patience with players. I was going to ask you how that transfers to young coaches that are coming into the league. Yeah, I, 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 I think there are some brilliant coaches that come into this league, and uh, and probably even more brilliant coaches that aren't in this league that are waiting to get in here. And yeah, I, I guess as. As I've gone through it, and, and listen, I may have been that guy when I was a young coach. I Not you. Been. Yeah, I was probably an asshole when I was that guy. And, and so I guess uh, you kind of evolve. And, um, yeah, I, I, just, I, I just think there uh, – I, I want to beat that guy across from me every night uh, without any question. But I, I just think there needs to be uh, some respect within the ranks when you can show it. And wait your damn turn. And uh, – um, yeah. 
I'll, that, leave, I'll leave it there. That's old school thinking. And, and you know I like old school thinking because that's yeah. the way it is. I Look, I think in all of our businesses we deal with people like that. Yeah. I know I do, and it drives me nuts. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not trying to say I have all right. – who the hell am I? You know, I'm not trying to say I have all the answers, and I'm not trying to overstep my bounds. You're asking my feelings. That's my feelings. And uh, I, uh, I, I think there, there are some – just and I'm learning from the younger coaches. I am, and and that's great. But I I just think there are certain times, um, you know, just yeah I'll, yeah. There are certain times that aggravate me. I, I can't wait. I one night will come, and yeah. I'll watch you continue to roll your top line. You will know. You will know. I'll tell you right now because I think I have to do that in, in order to. I have to. I have my the people I answer to. It's not my manager, not the owner. It's my team, and my team knows when a team runs a score up on us. Remember the crap Sully and I got involved in a couple of years ago, when he just started and he threw his power play. The game was in hand. He threw his number one power play out there. And they went back and forth. We still argue about that. He says it was a different circumstance. I just started with the team. I had to get my scorers going. I just kissed my ass, and and he was pissed when I ran up to score. Hartsy scores his hat trick goal. Throw the first power play out there. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter who it is. And so, yeah, it, yeah, you got me going now. But, yeah. That's part of the goal. All right, I've got one more subject for you, and this is way different. Saturday night uh, Saturday night will also be first responders night here at the arena. And I know that, you know, obviously the military is very close to your heart, and first responders are right there, the people that uh, they go, well, some of them literally go right into the fire. They chase it. They chase it, and they don't run away from it. Most people are running away from it. They chase it down. Uh, and so you can talk about military. You can talk about first responders. They are all with the same mindset that we don't have a clue or will ever get there as far as what they have to do. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 am, I just have so much respect for people that, uh, that are putting themselves in harm's way, and they're doing it in a split second. And uh, it's an instinct by them. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people don't have that. You may think you do it, and it, but it may take you 10 minutes to do what these guys do right now, put themselves in dangerous areas. So I, uh, I, I, just, I, just, uh, I just can't get to where, uh, where they th- how they think, and I just have total respect for them. And no surprise, many of the first responders – are former military people. I mean, they've done it on different fronts. They've done it for the country. They've done it for the community. And as you said, it's just kind of what they're made of. Yeah. You know what? You know what's funny to me, Bobby, is you get these first responders and you bring them in the locker room and they're looking at the players in awe. You know, oh, there's Nick Felino or there's Zeth Jones and, and this and that. And they're just in total awe. I, I, I just, I get it. I, I, you know, I think sports is a very important thing, but we are performers. And uh, we're not doing the real-life stuff that these guys are. So I, I, always, I always like watching them. And I say to them, I shake my head, I say, man, that should be totally reversed. And I think it really, I think our players feel the same way, how they just admire what they do. But I watch the guys, look at them, and, you know, they, they, they've been given the God-given ability to play a sport, to be a performer, not go save lives. And uh, half of them wouldn't even do some of the things that these first responders are doing. So I always measure what we do and how players are put on pedestal. Uh, the first responders and military, they just cast a huge shadow over any of what we're doing here, any of what we're doing. Anytime you have a chance to bring those kind of people into your room, whether it's yeah, to, yeah. to read a lineup and stuff, but do you – how much do you hammer that home, or don't you have to with your players? You think they get it? Yeah, we, we it, it gives it gives the coaching staff an opportunity to make a uh, a more glowing point, I guess, at that point in time, because because we tell the story of that first responder or of that military person. And I do think I, I think uh, it's one thing, Bobby. We have some great players in this league. We we have some we have some really good people that have been brought up the right way. I think it, hit home, it hits home with them to understand really wh- where we're at here, what the real-life stuff is versus the fun stuff. And, and I'm glad we're able to relieve them for a few minutes to get, let them get away from the real-life stuff and kind of put on a show for them because I think that helps them. That's all we do, though. And so it, it really 
it sets the tone with our players, and I think it's a, it's a really good thing for our players to, to be involved in and hear face-to-face of what these guys have done. Torch, thank you so much. Appreciate it as always. My pleasure. And it's time out with Torch, head coach John Tortorella. I'm Bob McElligot.